No, no, no! Stupid game lag! I yelled. Ah, fingers jabbing the controller. A futile attempt to salvage my online reputation. In my dimly lit room, adorned with posters of fantasy realms and heroic avatars, I was about to meet a digital demise. Teddy! Came the voice of my mom, invading my sanctuary. My door burst open. My mom's concerned face peeked in. Have you been on that game console all day? She inquired, her forehead creasing into a familiar frown. Mom, it's called World of Valor, and this is a raid night. The guild needs me, I replied, not daring to peel my eyes off of the screen. Darn it, I muttered, slumping back on my chair. We need to talk, Mom said, her voice serious. I have a clan to resurrect, Mom, I grumbled, but the stern look in her eyes told me that this wasn't a battle I could win. So I reluctantly followed her into the living room where Dad was waiting. He held a brochure. Hell Camp. Transform your life. We've decided you're going to a weight loss camp, Teddy, he declared. The room echoed with an unspoken question. Why would you do that? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Because you have to, Teddy. No questions asked. You are going, Mom answered, her voice trembling with emotion. That night, my dreams were filled with images of torturous boot camps and sweat-drenched nightmares. The thing was, I was more than just a fat guy. I was a gamer, an illustrator, a dreamer. I just wish my parents could see that, but all they saw was my size. And so, the next day, I was on my way to hell camp, the beginning of my summer in purgatory. Camp, sweet camp, I groaned, stepping off of the bus. The sign read hell camp in shiny, blood-red letters and in smaller print, transform your life. The irony was palpable. A sudden voice interrupted my contemplation. Hey, new guy, came a snide voice. A pair of beefy boys smirked at me. I guess they were my welcoming committee. Nice shirt. Does it come in your size? They laughed, pointing at my World of Valor t-shirt. Apart from cracking lame jokes, do you guys actually do anything around here? I shot back. The two shared a glance before breaking into laughter. My first day here, and I was already on the bully radar. Fantastic. The days turned into a routine of hellish exercises and healthy meals. I desperately missed my gaming sessions, my drawing pad. But then something, rather, someone, disrupted that routine. Is that a World of Valor t-shirt? A soft voice broke through my misery during dinner. I looked up to see a girl around my age, with sparkling eyes and a warm smile. She wore a pink stained shirt and had the look of a fellow outsider. Yeah, it is, I replied my heart beating just a little bit faster. Do you play? I do, and I paint. It helps me escape from this place, at least in my mind. I'm an illustrator, I blurted out, my eyes lighting up. She looked genuinely interested. That's amazing. Maybe you could show me some of your work. In the midst of Hell Camp, I'd finally found a silver lining. A friend, a friend who loved video games and painting, just like me. Her name was Lily. The bullies, however, hadn't forgotten me. Look at the lovebirds, they sneered, spotting us together. Sitting side by side, Lily and I were like two sinking ships, trying to stay afloat in the vast ocean that was Camp Hell. Ever feel like we're in a twisted version of Survivor? Except there's no million dollar prize at the end? I asked, a hint of bitter humor lacing my voice. Only every day, Teddy. Lily gave a half-hearted chuckle, her voice hoarse from dehydration. The camp advisors were relentless, their drill sergeant-like attitude making us feel like we were in a boot camp rather than a wellness retreat. You're here to lose weight, not make excuses, Mr. Simmons would bellow, watching us run laps around the field in the blistering heat. Then there was Todd and his gang, the constant tormentors. Hey, Teddy, I didn't know they allowed hippos at camp, Todd would yell from the sidelines, his laughter echoing in the fields. Just ignore him, Teddy, Lily would say though her eyes held the shadow of the same hurt that Todd's words incited in me. Hey, Teddy, did you eat my lunch too? Todd would holler, his goons laughing like it was the funniest joke they had ever heard. Screw you, Todd! The words echoed around the campfire and sent shivers down my spine. I was supposed to be the quiet one, the one who took it all in stride, but something snapped. Todd, his usual smug grin stuck to his face, just stared at me, along with everyone else around the fire. What did you say? Chubster? My heart pounded in my chest, but I didn't back down. You heard me, Todd. I said screw you. An uncomfortable silence hung in the air before he finally responded. Or what, fatty? And for the first time, that nickname didn't cut me as deeply as it used to. 
Maybe because I had lost a few pounds, or maybe because I had realized that Todd was nothing more than a desperate kid trying to feel superior. Or you'll see exactly how strong I've become. The silence that followed was delicious. For once, I had left Todd speechless, but I wasn't done. You think you can make us feel worthless? Well, guess what? You're the one who's scared. Scared that everyone will see through your tough guy act and see the coward that you really are. I glanced at Lily, who was staring at me wide-eyed, before turning back to Todd. And leave Lily alone. If you have a problem with her, you'll have to deal with me. Is that a threat? Todd asked, trying to regain control of the situation. It's a promise, I shot back, standing up straighter than I ever had before. As I walked away, I could feel the eyes of everyone else on my back. I felt strong, like I could take on the world, but there was also a strange taste in my mouth. Was this what being mean felt like? Was I becoming just like Todd? I was changing. The fat melting away from my body was taking it with the shyness, the fear, the silence. And Lily? Lily was becoming a goddess. One night, we sat under the stars, our shoulders almost touching. You know, I'm thinking about making a speech at the camp ball. She looked at me, her eyes shining in the moonlight. A speech? What about? About this place, this hell camp. It's made us stronger, about how we're not just losing weight, we're finding ourselves. She smiled at me, a smile that made my heart race. That sounds amazing, but it's not enough just to talk about it. We need to show them, show them that we're not afraid anymore. How? She asked, her eyes wide. We'll stand up to them, publicly, in front of everyone. We'll call out the bullies, the advisors, the whole system. Let's do it, she said. You know, there's something else I've wanted to do for a while now. Oh? She looked surprised but curious. And what's that? Taking a deep breath, I closed the gap between us, pressing my lips against hers. It was a brief kiss, a gentle one, but it felt like a monumental shift in the universe. I pulled back, my heart pounding like I'd just finished the final boss level. Well, that's one way to show who we really are, she teased, leaning in to kiss me again. Then the big event came. Good evening, everyone, I started, my voice echoing in the camp hall. I glanced at the camp advisors, their smirks infuriating me. I'd snatched the mic from the hands of the chief advisor, proclaiming it was my turn to address the camp. Tonight, I want to speak about transformation. My hands were shaking, adrenaline surging through me. You know what? Change isn't all it's cracked up to be. A wave of confusion swept through the crowd. The chief advisor stood up abruptly. The smirk wiped off of his face. What are you doing? He hissed into his mic, but I cut him off. We've all transformed here, lost weight, pushed ourselves, but isn't change about more than shedding pounds? It's about how we feel inside, about how we see ourselves. And then suddenly the mic cut off. I frowned, tapping it, nothing. The chief advisor was smirking again, holding up the disconnected cable. The crowd fell into a confused murmur, but I wasn't about to be silenced. In a split second decision, I drew in a breath and bellowed. Real transformation is about accepting who we are. I came here as a gamer, an artist, a dreamer, and that is who I am. That's who I'll always be. The hall was silent, and then, as if in slow motion, I saw a camper with his flash on. Others followed, the soft glow of screens piercing the dimness. The advisors tried to step in, to cut his spectacle short, but the cheers from the crowd were deafening. The power in my words, in my stand, had struck a chord. The hall was a riot of noise and emotion. I got home later that night, the adrenaline from my impromptu speech still pulsing through my veins. The house was silent as I crept in, the dim glow of the living room light guiding me. Mom, Dad, I called, my voice echoing through the quiet house. We need to talk. There was a pause before my parents emerged from the living room. They were surprised to see my changed appearance, but it wasn't my physical transformation that was important to me now. I want to talk about the camp, about what happened there. Do you have any idea what I went through? My voice wavered, but I pushed on. The bullying, the relentless drilling, the dictatorial supervisors. I felt humiliated, cornered. I thought you sent me there because I was a disappointment, I confessed, the words bitter in my mouth. Because I wasn't what you wanted me to be. Son, we didn't mean- Dad started, but I cut him off. No, let me finish. For the longest time, I hated who I was because I thought you did too. But I've realized something. I am who I am, and I won't change that for anyone, not even for you. Tears welled up in my eyes, but I didn't let them fall. This was my moment of defiance, of strength. My parents were silent. 
the impact of my words hitting them. I love video games. I love art. I love dreaming. And if you can't accept that, then maybe you need to do some changing. With that, I turned, walking towards my old room, leaving my stunned parents behind. They had a lot to think about, and so did I. As my phone buzzed with notifications the next morning, I rubbed my eyes and squinted at the screen. Viral? Really? I muttered to myself. I scrolled through the comments, my heart pounding. There's so many, I whispered. My voice choked with emotion. I was a voice for the silenced, a beacon for change. But it wasn't just the speech. My illustrations, too. They were everywhere. I couldn't help but let out a shaky laugh. <laughs> I've become famous overnight. The surreal reality of it made me dizzy. I thought about Lily then. I thought about Lily then, her fiery spirit and gentle heart. I grabbed my phone, dialing her number before I could second guess myself. Lily, I said when she picked up, let's go out. I want to see you. When I ended the call, a plan in place and a spark of hope in my heart, I couldn't help but think back. Hell camp, its memories, its hardships. They were a part of me now. I wouldn't have changed a thing. I found myself saying, I needed this. Needed it to, to stand up for me, for others. Here's to you, old me. I raised an imaginary glass. You've done good, and I'm proud of you. With Lily joining me, my newfound fame, my illustrations, and my voice, I was ready to face whatever came next. Bring it on, world, I murmured to myself, a fierce determination burning in my heart. I'm ready.